In the headlines, Niger coup leader proposes three-year transition to civilian rule. Farmers in Kasina flood markets with beans as have harvest season begins amid soaring price. And on the foreign scene, thousands evacuated as fires rage in Tenerife in Spain's Canary Islands. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Aisha Salihu. Many thanks for joining us at this hour. We we'll begin with an update uh, in the issue happening in Niger. Niger's new military ruler said Saturday a transition of power would not go beyond three years and warned that any attack on the country would not be issue for those involved. General Abdurrahman Tiani said in a televised address said their mission is not to confiscate power, adding that an attack on Niger would not be a walk in the park. His warning came a day after ECOWAS declared its readiness for armed intervention to restore the democratic order in Niger. In a 12-minute televised speech, Tichani announced the launch of a national dialogue which has 30 days to formulate concrete proposals to lay the foundations of a new constitutional life. The announcement came after an ECOWAS delegation arrived in Niamey earlier Saturday for talks to try to defuse the political crisis in Niger. Meanwhile, the new U.S. ambassador to Niger has arrived in Niamey as diplomatic efforts continue to resolve the crisis following last month's military coup, the State Department announced Saturday. But Kathleen Fitzgibbon will not formally present her credentials to the military government, which the U.S. does not recognize, the department said in a statement. The arrival of Fitzgibbon, an experienced Africa hand, who was previously the number two in the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria, comes just weeks after the U.S. ordered non-essential embassy personnel to leave Niger. Meanwhile, a delegation from the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, has arrived in Niger's capital, Niamey. The delegation arrived a day after the bloc's military chiefs said they were ready to intervene to reinstate ousted President Mohamed Bazoum. The ECOWAS representatives, headed by former Nigerian head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, met with the ousted President Bazoum and the coup leader, General Abdurrahman Tiani. General Abdul Salam spoke with journalists after the meeting. However, he did not give details of the meetings. Oh, yes. Praise be God, our meeting has opened door for us to explore dialogue and resolve the problem. We have seen him and listened to his complaints and what they have done to him, which he explained to us, and we will explain same to our leaders. So you want me to tell you what he told us? It will not be fair to him and to our leaders. The moment I say anything, even before I reach the hotel, you people will broadcast it. An elder statesman and former National Assembly member in the Fourth Republic, Saliao Matori, says there is foreign influence in the Niger military junta, warning that Nigeria, being the leader of ECOWAS, should resist the attempt to use military force to resolve the matter. He said this while speaking with journalists in Bochi after a two-day meeting of heads of military of ECOWAS nations in Accra, Ghana. Adamu Imam reports. Senator Salis Matori, a deputy national chairman of the North East Senators Forum, representing Bochi South Senatorial District in the Fort Republic, maintained Nigeria should think of the implications of Africans first before taking any decision on Niger coup d'etat. Nigerians should uh, uh, adopt the maturity that the whole world is expecting Nigeria to do. <coughs> that means we, we must stop looking at every issue from a very narrow perspective, from a very small window. Nigeria has, should grow out of that. He also says, 
Nigeria has benefited from the support of the Niger government during the Nigerian Civil War, even when some foreign allies turned their backs on Nigeria. Nigeria's Civil War, mm. the whole world turned its back on Nigeria. It is only uh, Jory Hamani of Niger mm. and uh, Ahmed Ahijo of Cameroon do agree to assist Nigeria in acquiring necessary equipment. Matori affirmed that irrespective of any measures adopted in tackling the military takeover of governance in Niger, Nigerian people, especially the neighboring states from the northern part, will continue to share things in common. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Former President Mohamed Buhari has expressed sadness over the death of several soldiers killed in an ambush and a subsequent helicopter crash in Niger State. Buhari, in a statement Saturday by his media aide, Garba Shehu, commiserated with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the armed forces and the families of the deceased. He said he is saddened by the helicopter accident following the tragic ambush in which lives of brave army personnel were lost. The former president said with the soldier discipline in the troops, it is a matter of time before they overcome the challenges. A 45-year-old Nigerian man, Sakiro Ambali, has been arraigned before a U.S. district court over allegations of wire fraud. Ambali was arrested in Frankfurt, Germany, as he traveled to Canada from Nigeria, while another Nigerian, Fatiu Lawal, was arrested in Toronto, Canada, where he resides. Lawal and Ambali, who were both arrested in February 2023, were alleged to have used the stolen personal information of thousands of U.S. taxpayers and residents to file over 1,700 fraudulent claims for COVID-19 pandemic unemployment benefits. Lawal and Ambali are charged with conspiracy to commit wire fraud 10 counts of wire fraud and 6 counts of aggravated identity theft. Although the total claims sought up approximately $2.5 million, the accused persons allegedly obtained approximately $2.4 million, primarily from pandemic unemployment benefits. Lawa remains in Canada pending extradition while Ambali made his first court appearance on Friday. The 2023 harvest season has begun in Casino State with farm produce such as beans being harvested and evacuated from farms. The season is coming amid soaring prices of farm produce in the markets. Abdullahi Yamadi visited some farms in Keita, Jibia and Mashi local government areas of Casino State. And this is what the season looks like there. Let's take a look. At the moment, it is season for beans in these local government areas and farmers are busy harvesting the produce. At least, this is good news to many Nigerians, especially low-income owners struggling to make ends meet. It is a good news because the arrival of the new beans is expected to, among other things, crush the soaring price of the commodity in the markets. I came to buy beans. I found the price very high. I found the price per beans per tier is just is two thousand. It's very on a high rate. How much are you buying it before? Before I think it was one two one three, but now you could find it two thousand. Man, the poor could not survive this. Even me, I was very shocked to see it at the rate of two thousand naira. Beans is one of the major farm produce cultivated in large quantities here, with many farmers hoping to smile to the banks in the coming days. For Nura Lawal Endaiki, a peasant farmer in Keto local government, his beans is about complementing other farm produce such as millet and guinea corn to improve his means of livelihood and pay his children's school fees. Majority of the farmers blamed the high cost of farm inputs and lack of access to agricultural loans for the decline in their production. If you look at even within the state, the local government that are major suppliers of food in Kazna state are affected by insecurity and that cause low productions of farmers to produce more food.
to the nation or to the state and to the nation at large because of that insecurities a lot of there are more than 10,000 hectares of land or 20,000 hectares of land in just Bad Ali area which the, the farmers are not harvesting it because of insecurity we need government to restore fees within that particular areas so that the, our farmers will go back to their farm and continue their normal harvesting. My main call is for the government to check into food because without food nobody can survive. Anything we are going about is all about food but the only thing I think the concern there to check most is all about the food side because the masses are very very hungry and you can see everybody, everybody is complaining the market is not even full. These farmers are ever worried about the activities of touts who buy their beans at takeaway prices due to lack of storage facilities and later sell them at exorbitant prices. At the moment, a bag of new beans is locally sold between 23 to 27,000 Naira, while in Kasana City it is sold at 43 to 45,000 Naira only. Many residents are afraid that the new farm produce to be harvested this season may hardly crush the prices of food items, largely due to the activities of touts and merchants who buy and hold the commodities. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Katana. Still in line with the effects of the fuel subsidy removal, as the federal and state governments negotiate palliative to cushion the 12 times currently faced by Nigerians, Benue farmers are saying the best palliative for them is for government to tackle insecurity. According to Jumia Zande, the Benue farmers, who are mostly smallholder status and rural dwellers, are saying that food or monetary palliative cannot satisfy their yearnings. Let's take a look at the report. The farmers say the government should end insecurity, which has displaced most of the farming communities in Benue State, with figures put at about 2 million. The issue of hazemen attack has always been the problem of Benue farmers for nearly a decade as I speak. Most of the times when Benue farmers harvest their crops, they are attacked by hazemen. So even when they store the crops in their, farm, in their barns, his main invasion always affect his stories. I want to cite an example to some local governments like Goma, Makudi, and some parts of uh, Idoma land where his men have taken over the ancestral homes of very innocent Benue farmers. They find it very difficult to assist their ancestral homes. They have not been able even to farm in large quantities, and the little they produce, they are not able to store. The internet displaced persons on their part are also eager to return to their ancestral homes instead of settling for some food or material palliative. And the best way is to, they should make sure they take us back to our ancestral home because we are tired of staying in camp. The security on ground here are not doing anything about to help. The sustainable solution in environments of insecurity, you don't require all of that money to restore people to peaceful living. You buy ammunition, you keep, keep, keep guns, you create barracks, it's good as a security measure. But the amount you need to enable farmers go back to their farms and return to the farming capacity before the attacks is less. With a new government and new security chiefs, there are hopes that the security challenges of Nigeria will be tackled to ensure the immediate rehabilitation of the farmers to their bases. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. And now away from that, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has dismissed reports that it has engaged music star Afiz Adesino Fashola, popularly known as Naira Mali, as its ambassador. NDLEA spokesman Femi Babafemi in a statement on Saturday explained that the agency's dialogue with Naira Mali centered around using his skills and platforms to discourage millions of his followers on Nigerian youth from substance abuse. The artist had on Thursday led members of his team on a visit to the national headquarters of the agency in Abuja 
to express his preparedness to join the fight against drug abuse in the country. Baba Femi said that the clarification had become necessary following continued misrepresentation of the purpose of the visits, especially on online platforms, particularly reports that suggested that the British Nigerian singer was appointed as an NDLEA ambassador. He noted that the decision to dialogue with Naira Mali was because of his over 7 million followers, half of whom abused drugs in Nigeria. The agency, according to Baba Femi, is hopeful that Naira Mali would, going forward, use his platform to share anti-substance abuse messages rather than promote and glamorize drug abuse. You're watching the news update coming up shortly. We'll take a look at the story of Gombe, 19-year-old robot fabricator. Details of this story and more to come after the break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you're just joining in, this is a news update on Trust TV. Here is a recap of some of our major stories. We told you that Niger coup leader proposes three-year transition to civilian rule. Plus, farmers in Casina flood markets with beans as harvest season begins amidst soaring prices. And now moving on to more stories. Some workers in Delta State have called on the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to address the issue of dichotomy and segregation between holders of Higher National Diploma, HND, and Bachelor of Science degree, BSc. While speaking with Jonathan Awanyai in Asaba, they described the policy as discriminatory and unfair. The report. Some workers in Delta State have urged President Tinubu to end all forms of discrimination in connection with the long-existing dichotomy between the holders of first degree, BSc, and higher national diploma, HND certificates, particularly at workplaces. While speaking with Trust TV in Asaba, they declared that the disparity had done great damage to the polytechnic education in the country, as many brilliant technical students who would have naturally enrolled to acquire high technical skills and knowledge are running away from seeking admission into polytechnics. It is looking for a way to carve niche for themselves. I really want this particular Tinubu administration to do this particular one. Tinubu, that is the president and the senate, those lawmakers, they need to do this thing so that it can be equal. Well, the dichotomy ought not to be there. Discover that even the HND holders spend even more time in school than even the BSc holders. And um, in terms of the HND, 
they, 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 the job they do there, that's in terms of um, their job in school, that is what they learn in school, it's more even more practical than what uh, the BSU does uh, do. They do more of theory. They said the continuous discrimination against polytechnic graduates, whom he described as technologies, has set the country back in areas of technology-driven development. Adding that the discrimination against Haitian holders has dampened and demoralized the morale of some workers, thereby resulting in low productivity. It is not too good that Nigeria is deviating, dropping that technical knowledge that has been obtained in Polytechnics and College of Education for everybody going into the literal system called university because of BSc HMD dichotomy. Personally, I want to differentiate it. BS is more of research, while HMD is more on practical. According to them, this development will continue to affect Nigeria's education and economic negatively if not addressed and reversed. A 19-year-old science student has invented a robot using recycled cartons and other plastic materials. The young Nigerian inventor, Musa Sarki Umar, said the robot is meant to support humans in their daily activities. Ibrahim Ismail has more. This robot was assembled with recycled cartons, plastic, and some electric wires. The wheels are designed with plastic materials, while the engine runs on solar and rechargeable batteries. So, if you are controlling the robot, so you, you may use the remote so that it can go where you want it to go. You can, it can deliver a message so that there is a Bluetooth in the robot. When you connect it with your phone, it can deliver a message to where you send it to. And you can also lift, a, lift some tiny items with the hand, with the control of the remote. The robot, which is still being developed, is expected to have other features such as legs and remote control, which the inventor believes can deliver messages to distant locations. It can do whatever a human being can do. Even right now, I am I already programmed the one that I'm going to do, whether if I got a remission or not. I am trying to do the, the one that is bigger than this one, and it can work like a human being. The 19-year-old student who has passed to study robotics now seeks support from the Gombe State government to improve his productivity and achieve his dream. Now I am calling for government to help me or someone that has this talent to improve his knowledge for further education. Musa, who won multiple awards for his inventions, said Nigeria has talented youth like him who are ready to uplift the country's status at the global stage. But this can only be achieved with the required support from governments. Ibrahim Ismail Trust TV News, Gombe. It pleases the eyes to see such young talent at such a young age in Nigeria. And now away from Nigeria, thousands of residents from Tenerife in Space Canary Islands have been evacuated as a wildfire authorities deemed out of control rages on, rages on for a fourth day. The Canary Islands Emergency Services said more than 26,000 people had been evacuated by Saturday afternoon. According to provisional estimates, a sharp rise from 4,500 on Friday. Some 11 towns have now been affected. The Atlantic Island is home to about 1 million people and is also a popular tourist destination. The Seven Island is located off the northwest coast of Africa and southwest of mainland Spain. At their nearest point, the islands are 100 kilometers, that is 60 miles from Morocco. Fierce flames lit up the night sky overnight, and on Saturday, helicopters were seen dropping water on areas close to homes where smoke billowed into the air. Some 5,000 hectares have been burned so far, with a perimeter of 50 kilometers. Tenerife Council President Rosa Davila said the fire was at a scale never been seen before in the Canary Island, noting that the priority was to protect people's lives.
The blaze has not destroyed any homes so far, she added, citing the fire brigade. The island's popular tourist areas have so far been unaffected and its two airports have been operating normally. With that, we've come to the end of the Trust TV News update at this hour. Do not forget to follow us across all of our social media platforms for more programming, news and documentary. I'm Aisha Salihu. Many thanks for watching.